What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we're going to talk transfer switches. A transfer switch is a really cool piece of technology. Um, there's two different types. There are automatic transfer switches and there are manual transfer switches. But it's essentially a three position switch that allows you an off position, it allows you an on position in one direction and an on position in a different direction for a different source of power. Normally transfer switches are used places like down at the coast where you know houses can lose power after a big disaster. Somebody brings a generator up, hooks everything up, they run the generator and your entire house works just like it was working without having to rewire stuff. So transfer switches are really, really useful. They'll take in, if you've got it in one position, they take power in from the utility. But if you turn it into the other position, it can bring power in from any other power source from a, a generator, from solar, from wind, anything like that. So it's a really cool piece of technology. The benefit in an automatic transfer switch is that it does all of the thinking and it automatically acts if the utility goes down. So they're far more expensive and they're used in really, really big places, um, big, you know, shopping centers or like big box stores. Um, they're used in really important places where there's a lot of liability, a lot of equipment, and people's businesses depend on them. Um, but most of the time for homes, you're going to find manual transfer switches. Um, you'll, you can find uh, automatic transfer switches too. It just depends basically how rich are the people. <laughs> now in both cases of a manual and an automatic transfer switch you're going to have terminals so you're going to have common terminals in the middle that when a switch is thrown in one position or if it's an automatic transfer switch um, there's a connection made between this common terminal and one load or the common terminal and another load so you're always going to be hooking the building's wiring to that common terminal because that's the one thing that never needs to change the building's wiring doesn't matter what source of power you're coming from, it's always going to stay the same. And then you're gonna have one set of terminals that you're gonna run your utility power to from the meter or from the service. And then you're gonna have another set of terminals that you would run a generator to. So if you have a large on-site generator already there, that's where you would wire them. If you don't have a generator and it's just meant for portable generators to be able to hook up to at a later date, you just leave those terminals completely empty. And that way when a generator is brought in, you can hook up to those other ones, slam the thing down and boom, you've got power. So a manual transfer switch is pretty obvious, right? It's, it requires manual input. There's a handle that somebody has to throw to change the position of it. But what's cool about an automatic transfer switch is that it kind of has logic to it. It's able to monitor utility power, and when utility power goes away, it can act. It can turn something else on. So usually what happens with an automatic transfer switch is there is monitoring happening of the voltage of the utility power coming in. If it loses voltage, it senses that and it tells a generator to turn on. That generator starts kicking on, turning on, and then it transfers power away from the utility to the generator. But it still keeps monitoring the utility. And until that utility is fixed, as soon as that utility voltage comes back online, that automatic transfer switch will then decide to move power back over and it's going to let that generator run for a little while because that generator is a large motor and it has to cool down so it lets it run for a few minutes and then shuts it off and it just automatically connects power and reconnects power it's a brilliant piece of equipment now another cool feature of most automatic transfer switches is that the majority of them have a manual override so you can still manually transfer things um, some of them even have remote operations so they work over ethernet so they can be manually operated that way as well so that's all i got on transfer switches let me know if you guys have any other questions thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next episode